songs of encouragement amen and appreciate the uh, the good prayers and uh, appreciate uh, your heart this morning to uh, to serve the lord and uh and to uh, try to uplift the kingdom of god amen and uh, we appreciate you so much this morning and do you y'all want to sing one this morning what y'all want to say I believe in a man named Jesus. He is the reason for everything this morning. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn with us as we change the order of the service, amen. Go with me to Romans chapter number 4, or 5, excuse me, Romans chapter 5, verse number 10. Amen. Simple scripture this morning. Not a lot of explanation needed to understand it, but there's something the Lord began to deal with me about out of this scripture, and I want to, if he'll help me for a few minutes of time to expound on. And how many of you know we live in a day where the Bible says that men's hearts would begin to fail them? The heart has not grown weak in the physical or the natural. It's still a strong heart. Still a heart was created by God. He made it. It's no different than it was 1,000 years ago, 500 years ago, or 10 years ago. But what's happening to man's heart is that he's losing, amen, the strength and the spiritual. The men's hearts are failing them, not because of natural, and even though there are natural causes that are causing hearts to fail, but really what the Lord was saying is men's hearts began to fail them because of their unbelief. We live in a time of fear. A lot of people are afraid of what's going on around them, naturally, or in the physical, in the real world, and spiritually. People are battling things, they're going through things. Physically, we're facing things like we've never faced before. I I've never seen a time, you know, like we have maybe the last two or three, four years, maybe a little longer than that, where it seems like it's, it's trouble on top of trouble. It used to be you'd have trouble, but then you'd have some, some space between. You know, I can remember, you know, the car would tear up, and then we'd get the car fixed, and we'd go a while. Then the freezer would go out. But now, before you can get the car fixed, the freezer tears up. 
before you can get the freezer fixed, the washing machine goes out. It's never, it seems like it never ends in the day and hour in which we live. Trouble upon trouble upon trouble. And that's in the physical. And in the spiritual, it seems like we never really get to the place of victory and where we can really walk with the Lord as far as, you know, I'm not saying comfortable, but where we can walk with confidence and have victory and be able to share our testimony and to be able to experience what God wants for us and to, to love people and to be able to help somebody before we're entering in another valley. And it's hard to help people when you're in the valley because you're going through something and it's hard to be spiritual. It's hard to be helpful. It's hard to be encouraging. It's hard to be uplifting whenever, you know, it seems like everything's on your shoulders. That, that can be a hard thing to do. We can do it, though. But it's just not easy. And it just seems like all this trouble and trial seems to be heaped in the last day that we live, or the days that we live in. And the Bible warned us and told us that it would be like this before Christ come back. Which is why we preach the return of Christ, you know, with such a fervency. Because I feel like we're close. I don't know the day, I don't know the time, nor the hour, but the season. And he said, look out, you know, and look at the sea. He said, men discern the sea and the sky, you know, from the color of the, from the, color of the sky. And they can tell... You know, that weather's coming when they see the certain signs. And, you know, when you see the things happening, the things blooming, and you see the birds, and you see the different things of the natural begin to take place, you know the seasons are changing. You know what's coming next when you see these things happen. And he said, even more so, we should be in tune to the Spirit, that we should know, amen, the things that are coming. Paul told us that eye has not seen, nor has ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for us. For those that love him, he says, but he has revealed them to us by his spirit. Amen. We're not to be ignorant concerning, amen, the day and time we live in. And for us to claim we don't know is ignorance on our part. Because he very much wants us to know what we're facing, amen. when we're facing it, and what's going on. God doesn't want us sitting down here wondering about what he's going to do. He's telling us what he's going to do. Amen. And he reveals it to us, and he has showed us things, and he has made things known. Will we know everything? No. Paul told us, he says, when I was a boy, I spoke as a boy. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. He said, but when I became a man, he said, I put away childish things. And as we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord and in strength and in power, we begin to see and discern things, and we know more as we grow. But when we, can, when we, when we stun or when we fail to grow is whenever we begin to suffer really trying to serve God. Amen. And I don't want us to be stunned this morning, but I want us to grow and I want us to seek the Lord this morning for our help because we live in a dangerous time and we need to know what God wants for us to do and what He wants for us to have and how He wants for us to operate so that we can have victory in Him. And in Romans chapter number 5, probably some of the greatest scripture written, uh, the book of Romans, I love to read it. Uh, I, I, I appreciate God giving it to Paul. <laughs> Amen. It's really encouraged me and helped me in my walk with the Lord. But let's read verse 9 or verse uh, 8, 9 and 10, if you will. The Bible says, But God commendeth his love toward us. Love sent with a purpose. We've preached that before. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. That right there should cause you to leap, amen, in your heart and in your soul, amen. That is a promise to us that God will protect. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear, kind, heavenly Father, we thank you this day, Lord, for your blessings upon us, Lord. As we've read your word, Father, I pray this morning, use it, Lord, this morning to speak to the heart. Help us this morning to grow, Lord, and to have knowledge and wisdom. Father, help us this morning to press into the kingdom of God this morning. And Father, as we do that that you'd have us to do, Lord, look over us and lead us and guide us and bless us. Direct us. But, Lord, let us have a hunger and a thirst for you this morning. Let us have a desire this morning, God, to please you with our heart and with our life, Lord. Let us, Lord, look to the earthly. But let us look to you, Father. But, Lord, as you show signs in this earth, let us be able to discern them, Lord. Let us be able to know, Lord, and to hear your voice. And to do that that you'd have us to do, Father. And we give you honor and praise and all glory. In Christ's name we do humbly pray. Amen. And amen.
looking at the scripture, three verses here, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That sets the stage there or sets the, 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 uh, the foundation that God sent his love to us in his son, Jesus Christ, before we were perfect. Amen. I know you're sitting out there and you do not sin. You do not make any mistakes. Everything is right in your life. You don't have any trouble. You don't have any trial. But before that, amen, before you reach that stage of perfection that you live in, uh, when you were yet a sinner, lost and undone, amen, struggling in this life, amen, God already preordained, amen, that his son would come, amen, at a certain time in this life, amen, in this uh, history of this world, uh, and that God would send him and that he would hang and die on a cross and shed his blood. He did this before we were ever formed, before we were ever thought of. Uh, and when we were born, we were born into sin. Uh, but yet even in that sin-stricken condition, separated from God, outside of the covenants and the promises of God, he loved us enough, amen, that he sent the answer before we ever were. Hallelujah. Much more than he says. So he doesn't finish with that, that thought, amen, that we were loved even before Amen. We were, and, and, and whenever we were vile and, and detestable, and uh, uh, we were uh, living in sin and shame, and all the things that you want to, to, uh, to put on that life before Christ come into your heart, now, that's between you and Him, but mine was a wreck, and it was a shamble. It was a, it was a horrible life to live. Uh, uh, in the, the face of it, it looked good. Uh, I had things. I did things. I, I had some happiness. I had some peace and this, that, and the other. Uh, but on the inside, Brother Elmo, I was rotten and it was filthy and it was discourse. Uh, it was horrible. It was no peace, no joy, nothing. Uh, I was separated from that love of God. Uh, but he had already sent the answer. He had already, amen, loved me, amen, enough that he would send his son for me. And I'm glad that I found that, amen, and made him Lord and Savior of my life. And he says much more then. So now that we have the foundation of Christ, he says much more. I, I love the much more. Amen. I, I'm ready for the much more. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready for the much more. He says, being justified by his blood. Verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 says, therefore, being justified by faith. So we know that he, uh, a justification here is by our faith in what? We are justified by faith, but what is our faith in? It says here that much more being now justified by his blood. So his, his shed blood is the course, amen, for which when we trust in him, uh, it is the shedding of blood, amen. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Uh, but because that blood began to flow from Calvary's hill, uh, because of the shedding, amen, the innocent for the guilty, hallelujah, because he willingly laid down his life uh, that we could take up, amen, and be set free from the sin and the shame of this world, uh, hallelujah, because he was willing to go, uh, his shed blood, amen, paid that sin debt, hallelujah. It was not only that he was willing to go, uh, but he had to die, and in, in his ability, amen, to say, Father, not my will, but thy will be done, uh, that he would willingly give himself for us, hallelujah, thanks be unto God. When that blood began to flow, hallelujah, the veil in the temple began to come apart. Why? Because the precious blood of the Lamb, uh, amen, the righteous Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, uh, he who was before, amen, and will be after, amen, who spoke it into existence, uh, is laying there, giving himself to us, uh, and saying, whosoever will, uh, let him or her come. Uh, hallelujah. The blood has been shed, uh, and it has set us free. Uh, and whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. Much more now being justified by his blood. It's the shed blood of Christ. That is the reason that we can be set free. Amen. Sister Avonell, if he'd have died without shedding of blood, there'd be no redemption for sin. He could have laid down and just gave up the ghost. How many of you have ever seen somebody just go off to sleep and leave this world? He could have, he could have died that way, but there'd be no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So it was not just the death 
But it was the way of the dead. It was the crucifixion. It was horrible in the sight of men and women who looked on. But I've told you before, the temple in the institution of God in the wilderness, when he gave it to Moses on Mount Sinai, to follow the principle that I have given you, Moses, I have given you a blueprint of how to do it. And as you walk through the door of that temple in the wilderness, you will see a picture of Christ, amen, laying on the cross. If we had time this morning, we would go through, amen, the accoutrements of that temple and where everything was laid. And where everything was laid, amen, lays it down. And you can put Christ on top of it on a cross and it'll line up exactly, amen, like that. But if you look where that altar is positioned, pretty much in the center there of that, uh, amen, the center of that tabernacle. And I look at a man on a cross and I see a spear going in the side. And I see the blood flow, amen, begin to pour out of the side of Christ. He bled on his hands. He bled on his feet. He bled from his head. He bled in the Garden of Gethsemane. But let me tell you something. When the blood began to flow, hallelujah, it wasn't just drops out of his side. But it said, came forth water and blood. And it began to flow, amen. A river was established that day, amen, that provided salvation for you and me, amen. It sets, amen, on the top of where that altar was, uh, where they would sprinkle and kill that sacrifice. Uh, that was you and me in mind, uh, amen, before the foundation of the world, uh, that I will redeem a people uh, if they will hear, if they will listen, uh, if they will set it in their hearts, uh, amen, much more now. Uh, being justified by his blood. Uh, amen. That was just the foundation. Uh, but we have so much more. Uh, amen. If we will push and press uh, into the things of God. Uh, amen. Let us leave the foundation of principles. Uh, and let us go on unto perfection. Uh, amen. Christ is my foundation. Uh, but there is so much more in God. Hallelujah. Being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Now this is before we were yet born. When Paul wrote these words, and when this was established in, pre, in the pre-dawn of time, it was already worked out amongst the Godhead. There was no wringing of hands. There was no checking and rechecking. It was formulated and it was processed and it was set in motion when God spoke it into existence. They had it worked out from that moment. I believe that. Well, how could they know? Well, that's God. Amen. Man has tried to figure out God. Amen. Since he learned to write, amen, with a rock on a wall and beat it with a, another rock to try to form some. Man has tried to figure out what God means, who he is, what he is, what am I here for? Amen. Simply the Bible tells me, amen, that I was created in his likeness and in his image uh, to give him honor and to give him glory. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, amen. Whether I paint rocks, amen, like a two-year-old uh, or whether I build rockets that fly to the moon, amen. My purpose is to serve God uh, and to lift him up and to honor him with everything and fiber of my being. Uh, but knowing, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ, amen, shed his blood for me, uh, amen, that brought me from death to life uh, and wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, friend, that's the greatest thing that's ever happened. Uh, amen. I no longer am self is bound by this, this world, uh, but my name and my citizenship uh, has been written in heaven uh, and I'm waiting for the day. Yeah. How about you? How about you? So now that we know that the blood, our faith in the shed blood of Christ justifies us that word justified means that we stand before God. Amen. Justified. Clean. Amen. Accounted worthy. The difference in this world, the don't judge me and the don't think this and the don't do that and the don't go here and the don't do there. The difference is the Bible says whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Well, that does not give me a license to live the way I want to live. But what it does, Sister... Uh, uh, sister knows is it gives me, amen, the ability, amen, through the Spirit of God in my heart to live according to His Word. A man can't live by the principles of God bound by the way of this world. He must be loosed. He must be set free. 
The vines must be cut. The ropes must be untangled. Amen. The blood must be applied. Hallelujah. And then believe and trust in that shed blood. It's not that it flows today, that he's crucified today, but he was crucified one time. But the blood has never stopped flowing. Hallelujah. That one time sacrifice. Amen. In the temple on the day of Moses. Amen. It didn't go but just for one year. But hallelujah, that which Christ has done. Amen. It's never stopped working. The blood has not lost no power. It's still able to save today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because of that, he said, we shall be saved. Amen. From wrath. That, that right there is a, is a promise. Not only should it be a confidence booster. Not only should it be a, 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 a way to uh, give us confidence of who we are and what we are and where we are and why we're doing what we're doing. We're protected. Amen. Have you ever felt protected? A child in the arms of its mother or father feels protection. I, I read something. I believe it was in our Sunday school lesson. Uh, uh, maybe it was Wednesday night. Brother Keith read it. And it said that there was a storm that came up. Tornado warning. The sirens going off. The parents all huddled up in this room. The kids all in the center of that room. Mom and dad everywhere looking out the windows worried about what's fixing to happen. But all of those kids, as you looked around, was in the center playing. They had no idea of what was going on on the outside. All they noticed, they was in the shelter, and they was comforted by mom and dad. And just being there with them gave them confidence. Hallelujah. You've got confidence in God. You've been justified by his blood. And because of that justification, because of that sanctification, because of that salvation, knowing him, being in him, you have been saved from wrath. So that means something's coming. If we've been saved from wrath, that means wrath's coming. So we have confidence that we shall be saved from it. So why is the church worried about what happens today? Mm. So we get to the place where we, we begin to question what is our standing in God. Amen. If we're worried about what Fox News says and CNN News says and we're worried about what the boss man says and what this one says. When we take upon ourselves to begin to worry about what everybody else is doing and what everybody else is saying. And I know this one's gearing up for war. And that one's gearing up for war. And this one can set their rockets on ready. And this one can line their men up across that canal. But let me tell you something. Amen. When the eye comes to eye and the nose comes to nose, it's still going to be God's hand. Amen. That keeps us, regardless of what happens in this life, regardless of who sits in the White House or the State House, it is God. Amen. He and He alone is in control. And no man, no woman can set anybody and push any trigger. Amen. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we must claim that. Stand upon it. Amen. Look the devil in the eye and say, get behind me, Satan. Whenever we get that boldness that we can do that, when we catch a hold of that in our heart, we're not worried about what this one or that one says or what this one's doing or that one's doing. Hey, man, I can walk through the living room and I can hear them on CNN. I can hear them on, well, I can't hear them on CNN because they don't, don't come on our TV. Just FYI. But all these news shows and different things, they talking about what this one's doing. And they worried about China. They worried about North Korea. They worried about Iran. They worried about Turkey. They worried about Russia. Hey, look at here. In the flesh, it's easy to get worried about what's going on. Why? Because we live in a real world. Hey, man, but just as real. As this natural world is, you can feel it, you can taste it, you can touch it. Uh, amen. But if you get born again into this wonderful spirit of God, amen, that spirit world uh, is just as real. It's just as tangible. You can feel it, taste it, touch it, and see it. Uh, and you can see the hand of God, amen, over your family, uh, over your children. Uh, amen. I don't care where they go. Uh, I don't care what they get into. Uh, my God, amen, is with them. Hallelujah. See, this gives us confidence. But God commended his love toward us. Love sent with a purpose, a reason for coming. 
that while we were yet sinners, even though we were not worthy of it, he sent that love to us. What was that Christ? Amen. Come and died. Much more that that's been accomplished and the blood has been shed and we have believed in that. Because of that fact, we shall be saved from wrath. Wrath is coming, but we have been marked by the blood of Jesus. Amen. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. The enemy is trying every way he can to discourage and tear down and defeat the child of God. But we have to understand we have God on our side. And if we have God on us and for us, then who can be against us? I know the trouble and trial is real. I know the enemy that we face is real. But still, he is underneath, amen, the confines of God. He cannot do anything outside of what God says. Job, have you considered him, Satan? He said, I won't even touch him because he has a hedge around him. God built a hedge around our hearts and our lives and our children and our family. Would we today trust God like Job did uh, that we could have a hedge around us if we simply believe, if we simply believe and trust God? Verse 10 says, For if, this is a condition, the blood being shed is a fact, it happened. Over 2,000 years ago it happened. It's recorded that there was a man named Barabbas and there was a man named Jesus. It's recorded that they, that they crucified Christ. And that they cried to release Barabbas unto us. That's a fact. And because that blood shed. Your senator, your congressman. Maybe your president. Your city council. They may not believe that. They may have no confidence in that. I don't know. But I don't care. Because I believe it. And I believe that, that when that blood was shed, that it paid my sin debt. And when I was guilty of sin, and I was and my guilt came before me, and conviction fell on me and drawed me to a sinner to a prayer or to a, an altar, and I began to pray and ask God to forgive me a sinner. And I asked God, and I fell on his mercy, and I said, God, forgive me, and wash me in that blood, and cleanse me, and bring me up from here, and set me on your course to do that that you'd have me to do. In that, knowing that, I don't care what they say. I believe that to be true. I believe that to be my foundation for which I make all my decisions. Everything I do comes from that point of view. There is nothing, no other influence in a Christian life that should cause you to make a decision except for the knowledge that you've been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. And what does God say about it? That should be our only course. I don't care what the encyclopedia says. I don't care what Google says. I don't care what this one says or that one says. Confucius, I could care less. What does God say? Because if you're born again, He's your only source. He's your only answer. And you should seek no answer in no other. Why? For if, when we were enemies, if the blood has justified us, the shedding of His blood, our faith in that blood, if that is truly what justifies us to stand before a thrice holy God and to be able, knowing that our righteousness is filthy rags, knowing that there's no good thing in us. Paul told us, amen, there's none righteous, no, not one. Amen, Christ would, or Paul would tell us here, for scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Knowing this, that there was nothing about us that was worthy of anybody dying for us. Uh, but it says, God commendeth his love. He loved us before we loved ourselves. Uh, it says, for when we were yet without strength, uh, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Because we had no recourse. 
We had no redemption. We had nothing, amen, on our side. Nothing, amen, was for us except for God. Amen. That's all we needed. The smartest men and women in this world didn't die for you. And all the wisdom that they have. And the Bible tells us that God takes the wisdom of men and confounds them. Amen. And because of that wisdom, I want to read that so you hear it like I heard it the other day. I might could quote it, but I might get it wrong. So let's just read it. Amen. <laughs> Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, its wisdom, knew not God. In other words, God said in his wisdom, his foreknowledge, his forethought, he allowed man in man's common, ordinary, earthly wisdom not to be able to find him. You can't find God in earthly wisdom. Don't care how smart you are. Don't care if you can add 2 plus 2 times 10 times 25 squared to the square root of the 18th power. I don't care how far you can go with all that. In none of that will you find God. Amen. We've got theologians out there. We've got scientific uh, men out there that are trying to prove God based on wisdom and based on science and based on things. I will say this. That in science and in wisdom and in knowledge, God does exist. But you can't find God and salvation in Christ through wisdom of this world. That's what he's saying. He says, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. So he says, and all they're searching out, they can't find me. They're like blind men. They're the smartest thing on this earth, but they can't see me. Why? The foolishness of that is that God is in everything. Amen. Amen. It doesn't take a degree in anything to know that God is. Amen. Man, that's a different message for a different time. Mm, thank you, Lord. But by the foolish, but it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Mm. We preach Christ crucified. He said, and that preaching of him crucified to the Jews is a stumbling block. And to the Greeks, it's foolishness. Why? Because they like men that are victorious. If you look at the Roman statues, there's none of them that are slain on a cross. They're all standing there in victory. Shields and swords and posture. Why? Because they want that confident air. And a man dying on a cross is foolishness unto them. And that's why God said he chose, it pleased him, amen, that to, to cause them to be idiots in their own wisdom, but yet he'll take a corn fred preacher, amen, from Nashville, Georgia, and put the Holy Ghost in him, amen, and he can preach Christ crucified, uh, amen, and men and women can find God. Amen. Hallelujah. The wisdom of this world will never amount to anything. He said, but if when we were enemies... That's what we were before we come to the knowledge of Christ. If in that condition, if in that state God loved us that he would send his son to die for us. Also, if in that condition it says that he reconciled us to him, knowing that we were lost and undone and sinners and didn't like him, didn't love him, didn't want him, and we yelled crucify him. If in that condition that he reconciled us, how much more? That we are now reconciled because we have believed and we have trusted Brother Robbie. We shall be saved by his life. If that don't give you confidence. If that don't crank your tractor. And help you to plow. Amen. A little further. I've got nothing else for you. I've got nothing else to give you. How much more? When we were enemies, he reconciled us. If he loved us enough when we were vile, detestable, unfit, unworthy, nothing good about us, 
but he loved us enough to send a son to die for us, how much more that we did turn from that evilness and came out of the world and said, yes, God, I want you. How much more will he protect us and keep us? Amen. His eye is upon us. I don't care what this world says. I don't care what this world does. Whatever comes against you, whatever happens between here and the return of Jesus Christ, uh, Paul said, for I reckon the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There is coming a day of wrath. His blood has justified us. He has reconciled us when we were unreconcilable by any other means. Uh, but the blood of Jesus Christ alone uh, and that in a, and nothing else uh, could cause a man to come out of sin uh, and be found justifiable before a holy God. Uh, a how much more, amen, when we come out of this world uh, and believe and trust in him, shall he save us? I hope you get home and shout. Whenever you go through something this week, I hope that this comes back to your heart. And you say, God, I love you. I know I'm going through something, but hallelujah, I know, I know you're working for my good. I love you, God. I praise you and I appreciate you. Devil, get behind me. You're defeated. Romans 8, 5, 8, 9, and 10. 11, it showed me the truth. I'm going to stand on that, devil. Sometimes you have to break out that old big family Bible, knock the dust off of it, put it there at the front door, and stand on top of it and say, this is what I'm standing on. I got nothing else. If the house falls down around me, this word's not going to fail. Amen. If the shingles blow off and the two-by-four is split in half, amen, I'm going to stand on this word. And God will form a circle right around me, right here in the middle of this storm. And they ain't nothing going to harm me. And everything I put in this circle... And everything that I declare unto God, amen. He's going to keep it, amen. He's going to save it. Uh, he's going to work through it. Uh, and it will stand the test of time. I love you this morning. I appreciate you. Are you glad this morning to be born again? Amen. Hallelujah. Appreciate the Lord. I thank him for his many blessings upon us. Thank him for looking over us and keeping us. We have a reason to be confident. You have a reason to be confident. Quit walking around with your head down. Quit walking around worrying about what they're going to do. Quit worrying about this, that, and the other. Amen. And lay it in God's hands. I'm going to be honest with you for just a second. The Bible says that there was a widow woman. Amen. That had two sons. And this widow woman had had a debt. Or we believe that her husband was died. We don't know. I can't remember if the story actually says he was dead or if he was gone. But this woman, she had two sons, and the governor or the government was coming to take those two sons. Amen. They were going to take her, her children away from her to pay for this debt. But she cried for the man of God. And Elijah, Elisha, the second one, he come. And he told her, he said, you go to every house and you gather the pots. What I'm telling you, this woman didn't have nothing. She had a little bit of oil there at the house. And a little bit of pot. She had no recourse. She had nothing. No food stamps. She had no wicca. She had no Medicaid. No Medicare. She had nobody that cared for her. Except for. Except for. God. She only had one place to go. We can run to the welfare office. We can run get the cheese. We can run get this, that, and the other. I'm not knocking it. But let me tell you something. God is our source. And when this world, amen, does not care about you, and it does not, amen, you better know God, and you better be able to turn to Him, amen, because the government's going to run out, amen. This country's going to run out of options to give and keep giving it away. We are running bankrupt, amen. We are running out of resources, uh, and we better get to the place we know God. He said, go and gather pots. The only thing that limited her was the amount of pots that they brought back. That was the only thing that limited her. God filled them up with oil, and they sustained her, and she was able to buy and sell and pay off debt, and God kept her. But what I'm telling you is this. 
amen, when this world has no other resource for you, God is our resource. I'm not looking for the help of this world. I'm looking for my God to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. He has what I need. Amen. Thank God for insurance. Thank God for some things that we have. I believe it's a benefit. I believe it's a help. But I trust in God. And we've got to believe and trust in him first. God help us in this day and hour we live. Help us to know who you are. Help us to look to you.